welcome New Salem family and friends from around the globe to our pre-worship experience. Tell us where you are worshiping with us from and subscribe, share, or follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. You can even put a good word in the chat through our website. Well, New Salem, revival is here. We are excited to hear what God, God has for us today and during the week. So tomorrow through Wednesday, our guest revivalist is Dr. Claiborne Lee Jr., pastor of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Fairfield and Susan City, California. He will be here nightly at 645. Our theme is that they may know me, Romans 15, 21. Also, it's always been New Salem's tradition to have a nightly focus. So listen up. Tomorrow, March 18th, is our focus on care groups. Come and sit with your care group for revival. Not connected with a care group? No worries. You can sign up tomorrow. Next, on Tuesday, March 19th, it's college night. So wear a current college or alma mater t-shirt, hat, hoodie, etc. and represent your college or university. Whether you are attending a college, graduated from one, know a family mem member in college or university, we want everyone to represent. Lastly, Wednesday, March 20th, please join us for community dinner from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. and get connected to ministry. That's right, you can get a free meal, bring your kids for fun activities, and sign up for a ministry all in one night. We look forward to seeing everyone, and remember, invite a neighbor, coworker, family member, or friend to Revival. The 2024 scholarship ministry will be accepting scholarship applications for current high school seniors and enrolled college students from March 15th through May 3rd. Scan the QR code on the screen, check out the links in the e-newsletter, or contact WK Wilson at wwilson at newsalemcares.com. Baby dedications are scheduled for March 31st, immediately following service. Please register by contacting Sister Joy Bruton at jbruton at newsalemcares.com or call her at 614-930-2204. Attention New Salem High School seniors and all 2023 through 2024 college and university graduates. If you received your diploma or degree between September 2023 and July 2024, we would like to celebrate you on graduation Sunday, June 9th. Deadline for registration is Sunday, May 5th. Please contact WK Wilson at wwilson at newsalemcares.com to register or for more details. Don't forget to tell us where you are worshiping with us from and subscribe, share, like, and follow us on our social media platforms, including Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Well, that's it for me. Let's go to our worship. Let's go to our sanctuary and worship our wonderful and faithful God. worship experience.
celebrate that we get to worship God together. Hallelujah, glory to God. Our call to worship can be found in Psalm 34, verses 1 through 4, and then verse 8. Let me tell you now, I am reading something different than what's there. Okay, for example, it says, I will extol the Lord at all times. Mine says, I will bless the Lord at all times. We're not going to get excited about that. Because if I say hola, I'm saying what? Hello. And if I say bonjour, I'm saying what? Come on, somebody, work with me. So we're going to read whatever is before you because the word of God is the word of God. And it stands true. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go. I will bless the Lord at all times shall continually be in my mouth. Ooh, that's something to think about right there. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Mm. Magnify, make him bigger, the Lord with me. And let us exalt, lift up, raise high his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me, he's a personal God, and delivered me from my fears. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man, woman, and or child that trusts in him. May you be blessed this week as you magnify the Lord. Oh, oh. 
know the name I'm talking about. Anybody know who Jesus is? If you don't know, get to know him for yourself. Stop. Jesus, the Lamb of God. As Sister Kenya would say, who wouldn't serve a God like this? Who wouldn't serve a God like this? He's accessible, creator, eternal, father, faithful, glory, good, gracious, guide, holy, immutable, impartial, incomprehensible, infinite, invisible, jealous, just, love, merciful, omnipotent, all power, omnipresent, everywhere, omniscient, all-knowing, patient, perfect, person, Preserver, provider, righteous, savior, sovereign, and wise. We get to pray to God. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Please join me in prayer online and in person. Father God, you are, you are everything. <laughs> you know all, God. And right now, God, we just thank you. Thank you for being everything for us, God. Thank you for knowing everything. Thank you for waking us up on this day, on this morning that wasn't promised to us, God. Thank you that you kept us in our right mind this morning, God. God, thank you for your son. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you again that he took on every imaginable sin, God, so that we may have a relationship with you. Thank you for Jesus enduring the pain, the suffering. God, we come on this morning praising you, honoring you, God. We're praying for this congregation, God. Meet us, God, where we need to be met, God. There are some of us hurting. There are some of us experiencing financial difficulties, God. There are some of us that just lost loved ones this week, God. And we're hurting, God. But we're going to trust you, God, in our hurt, in our pain, in our suffering, in our frustration, God. We're calling on you, God. As we began revival this week, God, we pray for a revival in you. We pray that people don't come just to see a, a, a spectacle or a show, God. We pray that they come to be blessed by you, God. Fill this place. Fill this atmosphere. Fill this community. Fill this city, God, so that people may come from afar and experience what you have to offer, God. God, I pray for our pastor. I pray for his family. I pray for his wife, God. I pray that you keep him lifted up, God. Give him the strength. Give him the endurance, God, to finish your race. 
to lead us, God, to lead this congregation to a higher level of praise and worship. God, in all that we do, we'll be mindful to give you praise, honor, and glory. It's in Jesus' name that we ask and we pray. Amen.
Jesus, amen. It's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. I don't think you heard me. It's a great day to be alive. Wasn't promised, didn't deserve it, but it's a great day. It's a great day. I need you to celebrate God for the person next to you. Celebrate God for the person next to you. You don't know what they went through to get here. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know what last week was like. We want to continue in the spirit of worship. Last week we started uh, this sermon preparing to see what God wants me to see. And our background scripture was 1 Corinthians 2.14. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to them. And they cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. And then we talked to you last week that there were two things that happen when you have your eyes opened by God. First thing we said that happened is that I can begin to see solutions to my problems. When God opens my eyes, I can begin to see solutions to my problems. If all you can see is your problems, you need a spiritual eye exam. So God can put some solution as the Holy Spirit in your eyes so that you look past your problems and see the solution. And then the second thing we told you that happens when God opens our eyes is that we can see the barrier to my progress. Uh, sometimes God sets things in place to delay you because you're not ready for where he's taking you. So sometimes he's got to put some things in place because sometimes we get ahead of God. Somebody say ahead of God. We, we get ahead of God and we want to run and see what the end's going to bring and not be prepared to go through what we got to go through to get to where God wants us to go. And so those two things we talked about last week. I can see solutions to my problems, and I can see the barrier to my progress. And I said to you, I made you a promise, if you came back this week, whether virtually or in person, I would give you the last two things that happens when your eyes get opened up by God. And so the third thing that happens is that I can see the defense for what's attacking me. Tell the person, ain't you glad you came this week? I, I can see the defense for what's attacking me. Uh, I get to see how God is going to defend me for the things that are coming at me. I don't care who you are. Everybody feels under attack at different points in their life. You, you may feel under attack right now. Maybe you're under attack by, by germs or you're getting sick. Maybe you feel under attack by the economy. You've lost your job or you've lost your income or you've lost your retirement. Or you feel like you're under attack by former friends. Hopefully they're not sitting next to you this morning. Or you feel under attack by your own family or you feel under attack by your own mind and the fears that are beating you up and you feel like you're being beaten down and you're under attack, and you think you're all alone, and you don't know what God is going to do in this situation. Well, come with me. There's a great story in 2 Kings, the sixth chapter. It's the story of Elijah and Almans. In the Old Testament, there was a nation called Aram, A-R-A-M. The nation of Aram was always at war with Israel. They were always going to war with them. But every time they would attack Israel, God would tell Elisha, who was the prophet of God in Israel, what the king of Aaron's plans were, and so he got the war plans in advance. So then Elijah would get the revelation, and he would go tell the king of Israel. 
And each time the king of Israel would kick the king of Aaron's behind, he's winning all the time because he had advanced warning to what the king was going to do. I went a little fast, so let me go slow. Every time they were going to attack Israel, Elijah, the prophet, got the okay from God to reveal to the king of Israel what was going to happen. Every time they were going to be attacked, God revealed how the attack was going to come. Let me go slower. Every time they were going to be attacked, God revealed how they were going to be attacked. You still ain't got it. Every time they were going to be attacked, God revealed how they were going to be attacked. He didn't keep them from being attacked. He just revealed it in the plan of attack. So after the choir, the king of Aram got a little tired of this. He said, I can't win. No matter what brilliant battle plan we come up with, somebody's finding out. He thinks there's a traitor in his own people who's sharing the secrets. And he goes, he says, we got to find the leak. We got to find the snitch. So the story picks up in the 10th verse of 2 Kings 6 chapter. Here's what it says. This happened several times when the king of Aram became very upset over it. He called in his officers and he demanded, which of you is the traitor? Who's the snitch? Who's been informing the king of Israel of my plans? And they said, it's not us, my lord. One of the officers replied, it's that Elisha the prophet of Israel. He tells the king of Israel even the words you speak in the privacy of your bedroom. He knows your plans before you tell us. The king said, then y'all need to go find this Elijah. Matter of fact, I ain't going to send you by yourself. We're going to send troops to go after him. Matter of fact, we're going to send the whole army after this one man. We're going to stop this leak now. You go find out where he is. The report came back, Elijah's at Dothan. Dothan was a little town in Israel. So one night, the king of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city where Elijah was in Dothan. When Elijah's servant got up early the next morning and went outside, he saw the city was surrounded by troops, by chariots, and by horses. So Elijah's servant has a panic attack. Goes back in, he says, Elijah, is me and you against an army? What do we do now? Cries out to Elijah, Elijah replies, don't be afraid. Here it comes. For there are more on our side than on theirs. Maybe you missed the story. There's an army outside this house. Not, not just some few folks. There's an army outside this house. The servant gets up and sees the army, comes back and tells the prophet, there's an army outside the house. And the prophet says to him, relax, chill. Let's get a cup of coffee. For there are more on our side than on theirs. Come here a little bit. See, there may be an army outside the camp. But you got to realize that what's on your side, you can't always see. And so sometimes you got to believe God for the invisible, even though you're looking at the visible. From this human standpoint, there's like several thousand soldiers out there, and it's you and your servant. What are you talking about? There's more on our side than on theirs. There's just two against this army. Drop down to verse 17. Elisha prayed. It suggests to me that when you're outnumbered, you ought to <laughs> not, not check your Facebook page for likes, not see how your Instagram is rolling. But when you're outnumbered, maybe that's a good sign you're on God's side. I I Elisha prayed, oh Lord, open his eyes. Now, Elijah's not praying for him. He's praying for the servant. Open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked out, and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. This is the angel's army that he did not see from a physical standpoint. 
He's going behind the scenes. I can't see this, but there are evidently some supernatural forces here that are going to protect us, and I haven't been able to see before. He sees it. He sees it. He sees it, and now he's not afraid. When God shows you who's on your side, you ought to stop being scared. Matter of fact, the old preacher would say this way, you ought to lose your fear when God is near. The rest of the story says that as the Armenian army advanced toward them, Elisha prayed, oh Lord, please make them blind. He prays that the servant's eyes are open and the army's eyes are closed. And the Lord did as Elijah asked. So Elijah went out and he told them, you've come the wrong way. Get this story. I told y'all this is better than television. He's talking to the enemy army that's come to capture him in Dothan. They're all blind now, and he says to them, you've come the wrong way. This isn't the right city. He's deceiving them. He's flat out running game on it. This isn't the right city. Follow me, and I'll take you to the man you're looking for. And the man they're looking for is standing right in front of them, but because they're blind, they can't see who he is. So what does he do? Read the story. And he led them to Samaria. What? What is, what's in Samaria? The king of Israel and the Israel army. So Elijah's leading the enemy army that's all been blinded, and one guy leading them right into the hands of the Israel army. It says, as soon as they entered Samaria, Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, now open their eyes and let them see. And the Lord did, and they discovered they were in Samaria. Huh. Huh. When my eyes are open, I open them up, and all of a sudden, I'm not in Dothan, I'm in Samaria. And I'm surrounded by the Israeli army. When Elijah's king, here's the real lesson, the king of Israel saw the captive enemy army, he shouted to Elijah, should I kill them? Should I eliminate them? Should I eradicate them? Should I wipe them out? And Elijah says, of course not. Do we kill prisoners of war? The relevancy of the word. Give them food and drink and send them home again. So the king of Israel made a great feast for the Armenian army, and he sent them home to their king after that, the Armenian raiders stayed away from the king of Israel. There's a lesson here, America. The easiest way to get rid of an enemy is to turn them into a friend. So instead of assassinating all those who came to take them away and make enemies of another generation so that the sons would want to come back and get retaliation, be nice to them, feed them, and send them home, the best way to get rid of an enemy is to turn them into a friend. And maybe some stuff would stop some other places if we quit treating people like they're enemies. Here's the point. You got things that are attacking you, and you're going to panic about it. You're going to feel overwhelmed. There's a whole lot more against me than just little old me. God needs to open your eyes and let you see all the resources on your side that he's commanded to take care of you. There are angels around you all the time. You cannot see them, but they're around you. God's forces are there to protect you. 
God says when I see from his viewpoint, I can see the defense, and all of a sudden my fear goes down. God's going to send people you don't know a darn thing about to protect you, to provide for you, to serve you, to provide what he wants. You don't know who God's going to use. Sometimes the last person you think ever going to come to your rescue has been appointed by God to do just that thing. Yeah, yeah, you got you to gotta understand. He shows you who's coming to attack you and says, I got them. Quit fighting battles God's already won. Let me say that again. That sounded good. Quit fighting battles that God's already won. That's the third story. We got one more. There's a fourth story. The fourth benefit of being able to see with spiritual eyes, to have my mind illuminated. Remember we said the key word last week was illumination. To have my mind illuminated is I see how God is walking with me. Okay, let me, let me, let me see. Okay, yeah. uh, when God opens my eyes, I see that I'm not walking by myself. M matter of fact, when he opens my eyes, I see he's been with me all along. I just didn't see him. I, I don't know what you're going through right now. You may have felt like you're lonely, you're alone, you're out there by yourself, you're fighting this battle on your own, you don't think that God is with you, that God is a million miles away, but I'm here to tell you, you're dead wrong. He's been with you all along, you just can't see it until your mind is illuminated. Now, this story I want to share with you is in the 24th chapter of Luke, and we're in that season, so it's appropriate. Uh, in the 24th chapter of Luke, the story happens on the day that Jesus rose from the dead, Easter Sunday. It's, it's the very first Easter. What had happened was, it's over the past 72 hours since he'd been killed, a lot had happened. Jesus had been arrested. He'd been whipped and beaten and tortured. He'd been crucified. He died, and he'd been buried in the tomb. All the disciples were crushed. The dream is finished. We thought he was God. Obviously, he wasn't. We thought he was the Messiah. Now they've killed him, and now they're probably going to kill us, so we need to go somewhere and hide. They're running away. Nobody knows what's happened. They're confused. They're in grief. They're sorrowing. They're sobbing. And there's a fearfully because they think they killed Jesus. Surely they're going to kill us. But on Easter morning, it's, it's, it's women's month. The, the Bible says some women go to the tomb. It's, it's Easter. And they find the tomb has been broken open. That's bad enough, but the body is gone. But there's a heavenly eyewitness that gives them a report that says, who you looking for ain't here. He is risen. Now, that's just too much to believe. I just can't believe that. So they go back. And they tell the disciples. The disciples didn't believe the women, so they come out and they go, yeah, it's true. The body's gone, but we still don't believe it. So then Facebook gets busy. And the rumors start spreading all over the land that Jesus is written. But, but nobody's actually seen him yet, Jeremy. Over the next 40 days, over the next 40 days, Jesus appears multiple times, walks around Jerusalem, at one time talks to a crowd of 500 people. That would be kind of weird. You was at the funeral now. He's having a conversation. If I was one of those persecutors of Jesus, all of a sudden, he's walking down the street two weeks later. He's in the Chick-fil-A line. It ain't Sunday. <laughs> and see, that's why within a few years, 
There are 100,000 Christians in the church of Jerusalem because there were so many eyewitnesses. It wasn't just a few people who saw him. It were walking around Jerusalem for 40 days and 100,000. By year 20, he's come to Christ, and the Jerusalem church had over 100,000 people because of all these witnesses who had seen Jesus. If you're seeing Jesus, you ought to tell somebody. But, but this is later that day. And interested enough, Deacon Preston, a couple of Jesus' disciples, you would have thought those who had been with him for the last three years would be the first people to recognize him. I need to help somebody. Just because folk walk with you don't mean they see you. Write that one down. A couple of Jesus' disciples are walking on the road to Emmaus. They're on their way out of town. They're leaving Jerusalem. They're in fear of their life. But they're grieving and they're sorrowing. And all of a sudden, Jesus shows up and appears to them and starts walking with them. But because they're in so much grief, they don't even recognize who's with them. Their eyes are closed. They can't see it. They don't even notice who's with them. We pick the story up in verse 15 in Luke 24. Suddenly, that's a great biblical word, Jesus himself came along and joined them and began walking beside them, but they didn't know who he was. It's a bad thing for Jesus to be beside you and you don't know him. Because God had kept them from recognizing him. Jesus said, you seem to be in a deep discussion about something. What are you so concerned about? They stopped short, sadness written on their faces. Then Cleophas said, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened in the last few days. Jesus says, what things? Now, obviously, he knows what's going on. And the disciples says, the things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth. They said, he was a prophet who did wonderful miracles. He was a mighty teacher, highly regarded by both God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders arrested him, handed him over to the condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had thought he was the Messiah who had come to rescue us. That's all happened three days ago. They continued. Then some women were at the tomb early this morning and came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing, and they had seen his angels who told Jesus wasn't there, and he was alive. Some of our men ran out to sea, and sure enough, Jesus' body was gone, just as the women had said. So we're confused. We don't know where he is. And yet, he's walking. Right there with them. You, you, you missed the pivot. He's walking right there with them, and they haven't seen him yet. they walking right there with him, but they haven't seen him yet. Let me see if I can bring it a little closer. They come to church every Sunday, but they ain't seen him yet. They got a church title, but they ain't got a church testimony. They haven't seen him yet. See, see, just because you're in close proximity doesn't necessarily mean you've seen Jesus. And then Jesus says, you are such foolish people. You find it so hard to believe that all the prophets wrote in the Scripture, wasn't it clearly predicted by the prophets that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering into his time of glory? Then Jesus quoted passages from the writings of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and all the prophets, that's the Old Testament, explained what all the Scriptures said about him. He, and you have to understand, and let me get some clear. A, a lot of times we, we think the Old Testament is about Israel. And the New Testament is about Jesus. No. The Old Testament is really about, let me get this thing right, about preparing us for his coming. And you see Jesus in illusion and analogies and metaphors and prophecies, statements and predictions. Jesus is all throughout the Bible. Then we find in the gospel where we hear the story of Jesus. We have this book of Acts, which is what happened after Jesus goes back to heaven and church comes. Then all the letters which I all respond. But it's all about. So I don't care if you're in Genesis all the way to Revelation. It's about him. 
Then it says, by this time, these two disciples were nearing Emmaus and the end of the journey. Jesus would have gone on, but they begged him to stay the night with them. He would have gone on, but they begged him to stay the night with them. They, he would have gone on, but they begged him to stay the night with them. When was the last? He asked God's blessing on it, broke it, and gave it to them. And after he gave them the bread, the text says, it's in verse 31, then their eyes were open, and they recognized him. You missed your shout. They invited him to the house and didn't know who he was. But out of compassion and concern, it was getting late. They invited him to the house. A lot of folks ain't got a problem meeting God in church. But does he know your address? When the last time God been to your house? When be, they've been walking with him all day. They've been talking with him. We've been telling him what we saw. He's been explaining us the meaning of it. Now he's eating dinner with us. What in the world? Their eyes were open. The text says, then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he disappears from their sight. Once he opens their eyes, it's no longer necessary for him to stay with them physically. The God you think is crucified and dead, been resurrected, but we really didn't believe it. Then a stranger walks along with us. He breaks the bread and all of a sudden, we realize it's him. You ever been looking for God and he's closer than you think? And, 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 and God got a sense of humor. Because as soon as they recognize it, he out. Mission accomplished. Maybe God has disappeared physically because he realized you recognized him spiritually. So he doesn't need to keep revealing himself day after day. That's illumination. In their grief, they could not see what Jesus was with them. They had the enormous loss and they couldn't see it. They just couldn't see it. They need illumination. I don't know what you've lost this last year. You may have lost a loved one. You may have lost your health. You may have lost your job. You may have lost an important relationship or a big deal. And you're grieving. Grief is a part of life. And you cannot see the, ever, the next step of the way that God's been walking with you. You've never been alone. You've never been by yourself. What you're going through, God is going through it with you. Now you realize how important illumination is, batteries included. You got to look at this Bible, and sometimes it doesn't make sense. It's just words on a page. But I tell you, if you read it through illumination, it's a great story. But when God opens your eyes, I can see the solution to my problems. I can see the barrier to my progress. I can see the protection that God has for all those things that are attacking me. And I see he's with me all the time. So there's never time God's not with me. But what's the payoff? Pastor, how do I get that kind of illumination? Y'all ask such smart questions. How, how can I get it? Walmart got it on sale. Costco, Sam's Club. How do I get 
that kind of illumination. There are five things you got to do to get that illumination. And you got to come back next week to find out what they are. The doors of the church are open. <laughs> Somebody's here today. Y'all look at each other. I just don't believe he did that. Yes, I did. I couldn't wait to get to that point. Just tell the Lord to pray for me. Just, just pray for me. There's somebody here who needs to get that illumination. You had a rough time. You've lost a loved one. You lost a job. You lost, you lost something that you thought you couldn't live without. But here you are, one more day, and God is still God. Grief is real. Sorrow is real. Anger is real. But God says, I love you enough to handle your temper tantrums. I'm going to love you through your worst day of your life. I'm still going to be a, and when the sun comes up, I'm still going to be a God who cares about you and loves you. There's nothing wrong with you. You're just human. And we have to admit that sometimes this thing does not make sense. I've done everything right. I did all that you told me to do, and I'm still catching it. You're catching it because I caught you. And together we can get through anything you're going through. Will you trust God today? Will you dare to turn the light on in your life and watch what God can do? If there's one today, you make your way on down, I'll meet you at that altar. Your day, your hour, your moment, your choice. What are you going to do with this man called Jesus? Not Pastor Troy, not New Salem, no, 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 no. You got to find him for yourself. Is there one today, whether you're here in person or virtual, who will make a decision to give their life to Christ? Come on, sis. Is there anybody else who will trust God? Don't look around. I'm talking to you. It's your day. It's your hour. It's your moment. It's your time. Aren't you tired of trying to do it on your own? Why don't you let God reveal to you what he has for you and show you I've been with you the whole time. Come on, baby. You ought to be more excited than that. You ought to be more excited than that. Is there anybody else today? Not tomorrow, not next week, not when you get it right. All I got is right now. Will you trust him? Will you trust him? He's on your side. He's fighting your battles. He's got the answer before you ask the question. Will you trust God today? Will you trust God today? Are you the one I'm waiting for? Your day, your hour, your moment, your choice. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? It's you and it's him. He's already accepted you. He's just waiting for you to accept him. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure you're not the one I'm waiting for? Come on. Trust him today. Trust him today. Look past all these folks. It's you and it's him. Will you trust him? Will you trust him? Last call. Are you sure? Are you sure? Be very sure. Just whisper to the person next to you. If you want to walk down that aisle, I'll walk with you. 
If you want to walk down that aisle, I will walk that aisle with you. Come on. You can't keep looking at me and talk to them. Ask them. I'm already down here. Have active participation. Just because somebody's in church don't mean that they know God for themselves. Are you sure? Are you sure? Come on. Come on. You get to win today. 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 I don't care what's against you, who's against you, who's plotting, who's scheming. God is on your side. It may look like you by yourself, but ask God, open my eyes. Show me the army that's with me. Come on. Come on. Last call. Last call. Church, say amen. Let's celebrate God. Let's celebrate God. Let's celebrate God. As our ushers get ready themselves for this morning's tithes and offering, we thank God for resources that he has blessed us with to be used for kingdom business. Amen? Amen. Now don't y'all take the Lord's money on spring break, all right? Amen. I want y'all to have a great vacation. Lord, thank you for the reminder that you're on our side. The illumination does incredible things with us and for us and through us. Bless these resources, use it for kingdom business. It's a service prayer. Amen. say amen. We certainly want to celebrate her and grateful that she came to worship with us today. Our city council represents Shayla Favors. Would you please stand? She's also a candidate for prosecutor for our city. Y'all, y'all, she's running for prosecutor. All right. Now, y'all know we need to be on intimate terms and relationships with the prosecutor. Amen. Amen. So say thank you and your husband for coming and sharing with us. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. Don't worry her today. We'll wait, you know, okay. About your case. And, you know, just, she's still on city council right now, all right? I know my members. Praise the Lord. All right, let's do the top five announcements. around the globe. These are your top five announcements for this week. 
Number one, New Salem, our revival is here and will continue nightly Monday, March 18th through Wednesday, March 20th at 6.45 p.m. Our revivalist, Dr. Claybon Lee Jr., pastor of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Fairfield in Susan City, California, will share the word. Our theme is that they may know me, Romans 15, 21. Number two, calling all voices of New Salem, Please join us in ministry on Sunday, March 31st. The next rehearsal is Wednesday, March 20th at 6 p.m. in the main sanctuary. Pre-registration is required. Music will be sent to all those who register using the link in the e-newsletter. Please plan to join us to celebrate our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Number three, baby dedications will take place on Sunday, March 31st immediately following the worship service for babies one year old and under. Click on the QR code on the screen or contact Jay Bruton at jbruton at newsalemcares.com or call her at 614-930-2204 to register. Number four, the 2024 scholarship ministry will be accepting scholarship applications for current high school seniors and enrolled college and university students for the fall term starting March 15th until the deadline date of May 3rd. Stay tuned for more information. If you have any questions, please email wkwilson at wwilson at newsalemcares.com. And number five, attention New Salem High School seniors in 2023-2024 college and university graduates. If you received your diploma or degree between September 2023 and July 2024, we would like to celebrate you on graduation Sunday, June 9th. Deadline for registration is Sunday, May 5th. Contact W. K. Wilson at wwilson at newsalemcares.com. All of these announcements can be found on NewSalemConnects.org, the e-newsletter, or our social media platforms. We encourage you to connect with us. Have a blessed week. Church, say amen. Again, we are in revival as of now. We are proud and happy that Dr. Claiborne Lee will be our evangelist starting tomorrow evening. Now, I shared with you a couple of weeks ago the reason he's not here this morning he is celebrating his 25th pastoral anniversary and in, with his church. I kind of thought that was a big enough reason for him not to be available to us, even though I asked him he couldn't change Sundays, and he assured me that he couldn't change the anniversary. Uh, our good friend, Dr. William uh, Curtis, is preaching his anniversary uh, today, so we're grateful for that. Now, I need your help now. When revival, somebody say three nights. Okay. Back in olden times, right after Jesus died, we used to have revival five nights. So, because I'm a caring pastor and I love you, I already gave you two nights off. Thursday and Friday. So if you're a member of the New Salem family or attend here, we want to strongly encourage you to come all three nights. I know Claiborne. He's here for the church family. So we're inviting him in for us. It is rude to have guests in and you don't come home. So for three nights, we expect to see the New Salem folk. Look at the people next to you and say, you know he talking to you. Because you already plot which night you ain't coming. I've been passing y'all 40 years. I know how y'all think. So let's do this. Let, let's start off with one. Let's just get Monday night in. Let's get Monday night. Tell the person that I'm going to see you Monday. Now, if you weren't telling the truth, say, please forgive me. So we're going to start Monday. Now, 
I need some special favors. He's taking the red eye tonight from California, so he won't get into mid-morning tomorrow. So I need him to be able to rest tomorrow till he gets here. Now, Tuesday morning, he is preaching for the citywide revival at Trinity. That's at 10 o'clock. It's really at 10.30, but it's at 10 o'clock. I need as much as New Salem be present at the day service. He's our guest. He's preaching for the city. Those of you who can, come in the daytime. The revival is nowhere near as long as it has been. We've cut out a preacher, so we, we're going to be done by noon. So I want to encourage you to be supportive. And I'll talk more about that tomorrow. So I want you to understand. So we need to, and, <laughs> and I know y'all thinking, well, I come Tuesday during the day. I ain't got to come Tuesday night. No, that's not how this works. So let me give you the lineup. So on, on Monday, we're going to be celebrating our care groups. We want our care groups to all sit together. If you don't belong to a care group, on Sunday you can sign, I mean Monday you can sign up for one. All right. On Tuesday, you know, we have fun with Revival. On Tuesday night, it's college night. So this is what we want you to do. You can wear a current college arm amount of t-shirt, hat, hoodie with the hoodie off to represent your college or university. Even if you didn't go to a college or university, you got a favorite school, team, whatever, wear that jersey. All right? You can see, see, the anointing's gone already. It's gone. The anointing ain't last. It didn't even get to the benediction. It didn't get to the benediction. You know, a wounded dog will holler. That's all I can tell you. You know, when, when, you, when you attended a college graduation, don't make me go there. Whether well, you're attending college graduation, so on Wednesday, Tuesday night, we're doing what? College night, right? So I want everybody to represent. You got a family member, whatever. You, you applied it. You just, just come represent the college. On Wednesday night, join us for our community dinner from 5 to 7. We want you to get connected to a ministry. So on Wednesday night, you can come get fed for free on Wednesday, and then stay, somebody say free. free. Amen. Get, and y'all know it's a home-cooked meal, eh? And then you can sign up for ministry all in one night, all right? So that will be our revival. Uh, but please, ma'am, please, sir, give us those three nights. We don't, I don't try to do a whole lot of stuff during the week. We don't have Sunday afternoon programs, none of that. Y'all don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right? So when I do ask you to be here, I wish you would just honor that, all right? All those folk who honored me during the 40th anniversary, this is one of the ways you can demonstrate love is not what it says but what it does. Let, let me be clear. Don't give me gifts and then be disobedient. Amen? I, I just love this congregation. Nobody else is more blessed than I am to pastor all these lovely people. Amen. God bless you. All right, did I do everything I was supposed to do? Ooh, you, what time is it? What time is it? 11 16. 11 16. Now, it ain't my fault if y'all hang around. I'm done at 1116. All right, let's stand up. Let's go. thing I forgot. Thank you for all of you who cooperated and with, we changed, we transitioned the small lot into the handicap lot. All right? So that's where we're parking all our handicapped folks. That means the folk who have legal legitimate stickers 
not that you feel handicapped that Sunday morning. Don't be harassing the security. They've done that based upon our request. So a small lot is to make it more convenient for those folks. All right, amen. <laughs> I saw somebody ask somebody, where can you get one of them stickers? We don't have them. Lord, thank you for reminding us of the power of illumination. God, when you open our eyes, what a blessing that is. Bless this house, bless these your people. We ask your son's name. Amen, amen. Travel in God's grace and mercy.
musician William Murphy. He says you gotta make your body language prophesy. I'm stealing that for the night, Bishop. When you say breakthrough, I need you to break out of the stuff that you're in. And I need you to break for it. Happening here. 